at iba pang progresibong tamahan ng mga magtataka at manggagawang agrikultural sa bansa. Itigi lang itong masyang sa mga magbubukid. Palayain ng mga magtatakang bilanggong politikal at lahat ng political prisoner kabilang ang mga NDF consultant at si Senadora Laila Dilima. Maraming salamat, Honorable Senator, sa pagkakataong makapagpahayag. Magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just two more uh, resource, persons, uh, resource persons. Next is uh, uh, Raul Manuel of the movement, uh, Youth Movement uh, Act Now. Youth Act Now. Um, Raul, kayo na po. Ang magandang araw po sa kapulungang ito, Committee Head Senator Lapson at sa lahat ng nanonood live. Maraming salamat sa pag-imbita sa amin na makapag-participate sa Senate hearing na ito. Ako, si Raul Manuel, ay bahagi ng Youth Act Now. We will not have the report here if we empower by the party. At bahagi din po ako ng National Union of Students of the Philippines o NUSP. Ang NUSP po ay siya ang pinakamatagal at pinakamalawak na aliansa ng mga student council sa buong bansa. Itinitag po ito noong 1957 pa upang bigyang boses ang hanay ng mga student leader dito sa Pilipinas. Bago pa man sumulpot yung Communist Party of the Philippines noong 1968, e eh buhay na buhay na po ang NUSP at nangunguna sa laban ng mga estudyante sa pagtutol sa tuition fee increases, democratic rights ng mga kabataan pag may violation sa democratic rights, tinututulan ang paniningil para makapag-take ng exam ang mga estudyante, sinusulong ang no permit, no exam uh, policy scrapping, tsaka ang campus press freedom. Ang mga membro ng NUSP ay napunta sa iba't ibang larangan, naging kongresista, senador, opisyal ng LGU at maging administrador ng mga paaralan. Sa kabila nito, pinipipilitan pa rin po ng AFP na bansagang front ng NPA at ng CPP ang organisasyon namin. Sa pagredtag sa mga organisasyon gaya ng NUSP, ay nareredtag na rin po ng pamahalaan pati ang mga student councils and publications na mga recognized institutions sa kanika nilang mga paaralan. Ang mga inaasahan na magsalita para ipagtanggol ang karapatan at kagalingan ng mga estudyante at kabataan ay siya mismo tinatawag ng mga terorista. Kaya ang ganitong ginagawa ay paraan para busalan kami mga kabataan na ang hangad lamang ay maisulong ang aming mga interes. Ang madami po kasi kaming gustong isang guni sa ating mga mahal na senador kasi maraming urgent concerns ngayon ang mga kabataan dahil napakalaki ng epekto ng pandemya at kalamidad sa aming karapatan sa edukasyon. Kami po sa NUSP at iba pang organisasyon ng kabataan ay naging abala sa relief operations nitong nakaraang linggo. Naglunsad kami ng mga konsultahang kabataan para malaman kung ano ba talaga ang nangyayari on ground. Paano pa mas makakabuti ang kalagayan ng mga estudyante at paano pa kami makakapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral sa gitna ng pandemya. Ang aming hiling po ay napakasimple nga lang pagaanin ang academic requirements o ang academic easing, pagkakaroon ng academic break sa mga paaralan at mahuhusay na pagtugon sa pandemya para makabalik na tayo sa normal, magkaroon ng ligtas na balik eskwela ang kabataan at kaguruan. Ito po sana ang gusto namin pinag-uusapan sa Senado at sa Kongreso kung paano natin matutulungan ang mga kabataang nasa lenta ng bagyo. Paano sila makakapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral? Hindi po patuloy na maretag ng militar at ng NTF LCAP na hindi sila napapanagot. Masama po ang idinudulot nitong retaging sa mga kabataan. Nagpunta po ako ngayon dito para kondinahin at maghanap ng ustisya at pagpapanagot sa retaging sa hanay ng mga kabataan. Gusto ko ding i-reiterate na bilang leader kabataan, kasama ng mga organisasyon na nakakatuwang natin sa pagsulong ng interes ng kabataan, tigilan na po ninyo ang pagbibintang sa amin bilang prente ng mga rebelding grupo dahil wala pong katotohanan yon. Pakinggan ninyo kaming mga biktima ng retaging na inyong ginagawa. Hindi mahirap intindihin at sa totoo lang ay tahasang inaamin na nga ng security sector na sila ay nang reretag at ang sinisisi pa ay kaming biktima ng kanilang retaging. Simple lang po meron ng definition ng retaging kaya hindi namin matatanggap na harap-harapan ay deny-deny na mga retagger 
na sila ay nangrerentag. Hindi po lingid sa kalaman ng publiko na ang AFP ang isa sa numero unong fake news purveyors. Bago pa man ang malawakang takedown ng kanilang network ng fake accounts sa Facebook, ay matagal na nasiwalat ang kanilang walang pag-iimbot na pagpapakalat ng mga pasinungalingan. Noong 2018 nga, ay pinakalat nila ang Red October Plot na pinangalanan ng AFP ang mahigit isang dosen ng mga pamantasan kung saan nag-recruit daw ang CPP para pabagsakin si Presidente Duterte. Pinagtawalan na nga lang po ng taong bayan ang ganong pakana, ang ganong pinakalat. At isinama pa doon ang Kaloocan City College na di naman isang totoong paaralan. Sinabi rin noon ng AFP na ang panunood ng mga pelikula hinggil sa batas militar ang unang hakbang para magrekluta ang CPP at parte ito, di umano, ng radicalization ng mga kabataan. Kahit ang mismong exercise ng academic freedom ay pilit nilang tinatapakan. Ano nga po ba ang mali dito? Ganito ba katakot ang AFP sa mga kabataan nag-aaral lamang ng kasaysayan at ng lipunan? Ang NTFL CAP ay umiikot sa mga paaralan at sa mga komunidad, ginagamit ang pondo ng bayan para ibandera ang organisasyon natin bilang prente ng CPP. Kahit na ito yung walang basihan at batay na rin sa mga na discuss na kanina ay walang ebidensya. Ginagamit ang NSTP o National Service Training Program, mapa CWTS man o ang ROTC program para manakot at siraan ang mga organisasyon ng kabataan. Dito pa lang makikita na natin kung gaano kasahol ang pagpapakalat ng maling impormasyon nitong NTFLK. Sa lahat ng narinig natin ngayong araw at nitong nakaraang Senate hearing, litaw na litaw na palang mga kasinungalingan at atake ang ginagawa ng security sector. Nagdudulot po ito ng takot sa aming mga kabataan at mga estudyante. Dahil ano ba ang nangyari sa mga aktivista, sa mga magsasaka, mga kabataan, indigenous people at human rights workers na niretag kung hindi man tinakot at hinaras sila ay ikinulong at ang pinakamasahol, sila po ay pinatay. Habang tumatagal ay nagbimistulang parang bumabalik tayo sa panahon ng mga Espanyol. Bawal na po ba magtanong? Bawal lang magsalita? Bawal lang magpahayag? Anong mangyayari sa amin na gusto lamang na mag-express ng dissent? What is supposedly a hearing about red tagging is turning into a hearing to red tag. Is this a prelude to prescription of our organizations under the terror law? Lubos na nakakadismaya na umabot tayo sa puntong ag pangsa, ang pagsambit lamang ng pangalan ng isang personalidad at ang pagpapakita ng litrato nila ay pwede nang maging ebidensya o patunay sa mga bagay na wala namang batayan. Itong red tagging spree ng NTFLK ay bahagi ng kanilang iskema para bigyang daan ang mas malalapang mga atake sa mga kritiko at mga progresibo. Ang tingin pala nila Ngayon namin na rin naman mula sa bibig po ni General Parladi kanina ay armado raw ang mga miyembro ng CPP. Sa mata ng NTFLK, walang pinagkakaiba ang armado at di armado. Kaya ang ginagawa nila sa mga pinaghihinalaang komunista ay tinatamnan ng baril at bala at ire-red tag para ma-justify sa mata ng publiko ang mga illegal na pag-aaresto. Hindi naiintindihan o pilit na hindi iniintindi ng militar, kapulisan at NTFLK na ang nagpapatuloy na digmaan ngayon sa bansa ay hindi dulot ng recruitment o manipulasyon o radicalization pa nga. Hindi po tanga ang mamamayang Pilipino. Walang hahawak ng baril dahil sila ay nalilang lamang na ilan. Kung mag-aaral tayo ng kasaysayan, makikita natin na ang paghihimagsip ay dulot ng kawalang hustisya at nanonood ng kahirapan sa ating bansa. Kanina po ay may pinakitang graph, ang NICA. Isang inaccurate na graph na may misleading na label sa gilid. Ako po applied mathematics ang aking background kaya nakita ko po agad kung gaano ka misleading ang pinakitang graph. Gamit ang graph na yun, sinasabi ng NICA na ang paglakas ng NPA ay kaugnay ng paghina ng ating ekonomiya and vice versa. Ipinapahiwatig na may kahirapan daw dahil may paghihimagsik. 
pero baligtad po ang katotohanan. May paghimagsik dahil may kahirapan. Hanggat hindi nalulutas ang mga ugat ng digmaan, ay hindi po ito matatapos. Bago po ako magtapos, kahapon ipinagdiwang natin ang ikaw 157 na kaarawan ni Gat Andres Bonifacio. Nakagaya po namin ay isa rin kabataan nung siya ay lumaban. Wala siyang pag-iimbot na inalay ang kanyang buhay para ipagtagumpay ang pakikipaka ng sambayanan para sa kalayaan. Kaya naman, hindi mahirap isipin na kung nabubuhay pa si Andres Bonifacio ngayon, ay tiyak, magiging biktima din po siya ng red tagging at iba't ibang forma at antas ng pasistang atake at repression. Tiyak, Lulustayin din ng gobyerno ang pondo ng bayan para atakihin ang KKK na binuo ni na Andres Bonifacio, kagaya na lamang ng ginagawa ngayon sa progressive youth organizations. Uh, Mr. Chair, this red tagging obviously does not offer any solution to the problems of students and youth. The 19 billion peso budget of NTF-PELCA is a total waste of people's money. We, the youth, call on Congress to take back this 19 billion peso budget allocation and instead appropriate it to gadgets and modules for students and teachers. We also call for the usage of this amount for relief and rehabilitation of areas struck by typhoons. Sa panghuli, hayaan po ninyo akong sabihin na wala pong mali sa paglaban. May mali po, kaya lumalaban. Ako, kasama ang libo-libong lider kabataan at mag-aaral mula sa mga konseho, publikasyon at organisasyon sa mga pamantasan at komunidad ay nananawagan na itigil na po ang red tagging. Dapat ay may managot sa walang tigil na atake sa karapatan ng kabataan at mamamayang Pilipino. That would be all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh... Before, before, before that, Mr. Chairman, before you, um, uh, lest we are uh, misunderstood here in the Senate and in Congress, um, the Senate and Congress, for that matter, has already infused 15 billion for the pandemic, no, for the typhoon victims, 15 billion. At pagkatapos, uh, I think for the pandemic, uh, an additional 20. Ano, dahil baka akala nung nagsalita eh, walang ginawa ang Congress at Senado tungkol doon. Mukhang ang gusto yata ay madagdagan pa. Ay, yes, it's yes. confirmed that. Kasi ako yung nag-introduce ng uh, institutional amendment. Ang nirecommend ko, 20 billion for the typhoons. Ano? Ang inadapt ng Senate version is 15 billion. I just hope na madagdagan pa sa bayan na po. <laughs> sa pandemic, ganun din. Dinagdagan na rin namin sa universal health care. Lagi namin dinadagdagan yung taon-taon. So, na-address na ng Kongreso yung panawagan ng uh, si Mr. Raul. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anyway, kung nais nyo pang dagdagan yung budget ko ng MTFL Cup, I think is available for. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Chair, um, as the last video, uh, Si Representative Femia Kulyaman po, who is still in mourning. Uh, despite being in mourning, uh, nagpasabi po siya sa aming kahapon na nais niyang magpaabot uh, ng kanyang mensahe dahil sa nabasa o narinig niyang statements kahapon ng ating security sector involving her child. So, uh, could we play the video of uh, Congresswoman Kulyaman? After which I think Kong uh, Mary will end the punch you love at uh, Sinari and then we will be open for questions. Yung video on Afenia.
i-play po yung video na pwede niya po yung um, file niya. Well, waiting for the video. Pwede ko lang tanongin si Commissioner Dumpit ng CHR. May pakiusap lang kasi kanina. Kaya po siya sana kinulang atensyon. Doon sa pahayag ng tagakadamay. Baka pwede yung pakitingnan ninyo. Ma ano naman yan eh, matitrace naman sa Pandibulacan. So... Good afternoon po. Yes, uh, Commissioner. Ano yan? Pakiusap na lang yan doon sa dinagdag ko sa budget ninyo. Apa, sige po. <laughs> sige, salamat. Para si Senato Pangilin Nyata, meron ding uh, issue na gustong i-raise sa CHR. Senator Gigo. Mr. Chair, while we are waiting for the other video, maybe uh, the CHR Commissioner would like to... Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am, you're recognized. Commissioner Dumpit, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Um, uh, thank you for um, for allowing CHR to be part of this uh, hearing. Um, let me just um, siguro share with you our our um, response to the red tagging issue. And as you know, last July we actually um, uh, issued a resolution adopting our report on our inquiry on uh, human rights defenders and uh, the human rights situation or the situation of human rights defenders in the country. And it actually devotes a uh, portion of it on red tagging. So um, allow me, if I may, to uh, read to you some portions that may be relevant to this meeting, and then perhaps I will segue into some uh, figures that we have already. If I am allowed to do that, Your Honor, and um, uh, yes, just present how many minutes... Okay. How many minutes do I have so that I can budget my time? Gusto niya, dalawang oras, okay lang. Dalawang beses yun. Sige po. So, last July, we did issue a report based on our inquiry on human rights defenders and the attacks against human rights defenders. So, a part of that is on red tagging. And just to be able to quote some portions, but this is available also in our website. So to make it easy for military and paramilitary units to silence or, or cause untold human rights abuses on vocal dissenters, government agents usually resort to stereotyping or caricaturing individuals. And this quote is coming from Zarate versus Aquino III, which is um, the dissenting opinion of Justice Leonen in um, GR number 220028. The act of labeling, branding, naming, and accusing individuals and or organizations of being left-leaning, subversives, communists, or terrorists is known as red tagging or red baiting. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, Philip Alston, at the time described it as follows. 
vilification, labeling, or guilt by association. It involves the characterization of most groups on the left of the political spectrum as front organizations for armed groups whose aim is to destroy democracy. The result is that a wide range of groups, including human rights defenders or human rights advocates, labor union organizers, journalists, teachers unions, women's groups, indigenous organizations, religious groups, student groups, agrarian reform advocates, and others are classified as fronts and then as enemies of the state that are accordingly considered to be legitimate targets. That ends the uh, quote from Philip Alston. Alston actually observed this phenomenon of red tagging or red baiting in the Philippines during his visit in 2007 and recommended that government should immediately direct all military officers to cease making public statements linking political or other civil society groups to those engaged in armed insurgencies. If such characterizations are ever to be made, it must be by civilian authorities on the basis of transparent criteria and in conformity with human rights provisions of the Constitution and relevant treaties. Yet, after more than a decade, since Alston's recommendations, red tagging or red baiting still continues to threaten life, liberty, and security of human rights defenders across sectors. Um, in any case, whether it is being perpetrated by government or by third parties, and notwithstanding the intentions behind it, it cannot be denied that red tagging is a matter of serious concern that should not be taken lightly, aside from its consequent delegitimate, uh, delegitimate uh, I'm sorry, uh, delegitimization uh, of dissent and public stigmatization, it is more often than not a prelude or even an open invitation for anyone to commit further atrocities against the person's stand. The commission thus echoes the assertion of human rights defenders that the act of being red tagged by itself already constitutes a grave threat to their life, liberty, and security. They must therefore be protected and provided with an effective remedy against it, regardless of whether they can accurately pinpoint the source of the threat or identify sus suspected possible assailants. The Commission also finds it apt to reiterate its earlier pronouncement that while some members of certain organizations may support the armed struggle, it is very likely that most of the other members recruited into these organizations have no idea on what communism or revol revolutionary struggle is about, or even that their leaders might be supporting the NPA. Many of them may be devoid of revol revolutionary ideology, uh, joining movements merely to articulate discontent or to advance specific advocacies, such as the preservation of ancestral domains, or the implementation of agrarian reform or improvement in the delivery of justice, healthcare, education, and other social services. The existence of these groups and the freedom they exercise in articulating issues should be viewed as badges of a vibrant democracy and not as attacks against the state. We also recommended the following, among others, a pursuant to the state's obligation to protect and promote the internationally recognized human rights of all individuals within its territory and subject to its jurisdiction, the Commission recommends that the executive publicly acknowledge, acknowledge the legitimacy of the work of human rights defenders and seek to actively protect and promote the right to defend rights. Adopt as part of the national policy the principles and rights defined in the Declaration on Human Rights Defenders and other international instruments. Combat impunity by investigating all allegations of extrajudicial killings and forced abductions of human rights defenders and hold to account all those proven guilty of um, criminal acts, of such criminal acts. Prohibit violations against human rights defenders, including vilifying, surveilling, red tagging, threatening with reprisals, and other practices that restrict the right to defend. 
There are many more um, recommendations here, Your Honor, but I would like to just um, uh, share with you other thoughts on the matter. Um, um, I was asked um, also to, um, to comment on whether um, pwede bang ipagbawal or criminalize or i-criminalize ang red tatting? Will it not be against freedom of expression? So, of course, yung government uh, funded vilification can campaign cannot be equated with normal expression of ordinary citizens. So, um, uh, just to uh, be able to say that, um, uh, of course, it is within the plenary powers of uh, of uh, Congress to be able to determine uh, whether an act can be criminalized. No? It is not against freedom of expression because free speech is not absolute. We all know that. It cannot be exercised to the detriment of others, and in this case, those who suffer HRVs as a result of red tagging. Um, just to give you an idea of some figures, we're still cleaning this up, Your Honors, but based on our data bank, um, uh, uh, we have started our computerization in 2009. And from 2009 to 2016, we have tagged, reported, um, uh, uh, there has been a uh, report of 29, uh, 25 rather, red tagging incidents or red dating as keywords. But when we looked at 2016 to 2020, Your Honor, we have already logged 96. So in this case, um, given the period of 2009 to 2016, that's about how many years? 17 years. As opposed to five years, um, uh, you can just uh, imagine the spike in uh, the data that we have, Your Honor. Um, aside from that, um, just, just to be able to say, Your Honor, that um, uh, I, I too have been red tagged recently, and this was last July. Um, uh, and I'm... I'm happy that I am the one representing the commission so that I can share this with you. Um, this is in line with the developments following my participation in the 45th session of the Human Rights Council and media interviews I granted to impart the message of the commission regarding the recently adopted Human Rights Council resolution on the technical assistance and capacity building for domestic efforts on human rights in the Philippines. Our social media monitoring team has flagged a post coming from the official Facebook page of the Southern Luzon Command of the Philippine Army. It is a message from General Antonio Parlado Jr., Commanding General of the Southern Luzon Command, and uh, he is part of the regional task force to end uh, the communist local armed conflict. Um, the post and the link we can share with you um, uh, later, Your Honor. And, uh, this is entitled Response on the Statement Made by CHR Commissioner Karen Dumpit against the Human Rights Council, um, the UN Human Rights Council. Your Honors, in the 27 years of uh, me being in the Commission on Human Rights, I have never witnessed such brazen disrespect for the institution coming from a military officer, an active military officer at that. More astonishing even is the enabling environment for this kind of behavior to thrive within the administration. I and we have always maintained professionalism and fulfilled our role to the best of our abilities as an independent monitor. I have expressed our message with great care to balance the views of both government and civil society anchored on the human rights situation that we have observed on the ground. Upon closer review of the post, you will find that the language that was used was not just countering the message that we conveyed on the matter, which we accept as fundamental to a functioning democracy. However, disturbingly, it uses the humanizing language that incites hatred. Uh, it described us as termites, Your Honor. I recall this language similarly used in the context of the Rwandan genocide. So it associates me, Chairperson Chito Gascon, and our institution, among others, with the Communist Party of the Philippines, National People's Army, and National Democratic Front, or CPP, NPA, and BL. And if I may quote, that is an endless source of attacks of terror against the Filipino people. And this is red tagging, as we call it. This is in the wake of the Anti-Terrorism Act, 
which was recently passed and is now subject of an unprecedented 38 petitions questioning its constitutionality in the Supreme Court. Incidentally, Your Honor, we have also submitted our amicus brief on the matter and we will be happy to furnish you with a copy, with a copy of that. Um, it is in this context that uh, uh, I share this information with you. Um, just to be able to say also that in line with the Human Rights Council resolution that was recently adopted, there is a specific paragraph there that actually in the preambular paragraph, uh, if I may quote, it says, and uh, the Philippine government has accepted this in the Human Rights Council, that it condemns all acts of intimidation and reprisal, both online and offline, by state and non-state actors against individuals and groups working to promote and protect human rights and those who seek to cooperate or have cooperated with the United Nations, its representatives and mechanisms in the field of human rights. Um, um, and we, we have just issued or we're in the process of completing the um, issuance of an advisory on the UN Human Rights Council re resolution offering technical assistance and capacity building to the Philippine government. And um, we want to be able to say that uh, it strives towards, uh, we want to strive towards ending reprisals and red tagging of human rights defenders and organizations and discern their work as monitors of the Philippine government in the fulfillment of its obligations under international human rights norms and domestic laws. And uh, with that, Your Honor, um, we want to be able to um, advise uh, the legislature if we can expedite the passing into the, the Human Rights Defenders Bill. And within that bill, uh, we can indeed seek to criminalize red tagging to ensure the protection and promotion of the rights of human rights defenders and the prosecution of perpetrators uh, of violations against them. Um, last point, Your Honor, Sigua, just to be able to say, no, statements like this hurled against us and human rights defenders, at the very least, may amount to a violation of the Philippines' code of conduct and ethical standards for public officials and employees, RA 6713. Uh, we, are, we are grateful because it is really important to inquire as to why the current administration, specifically the armed forces of the Philippines, um, uh, and other mechanisms no, has not taken action to discipline its ranks to ensure that public officials and employees comply with the highest degree of standards and ethics in public service required by law and demonstrate respect, protection, and fulfillment of their human rights or uh, obligations. Here. So um, uh, that's all, Your Honor. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Commissioner Sudumpit. Senate President Sir Gomez. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, while uh, the, the CHR of Senate was uh, uh, giving us a, a report on and, and her manifestation, um, Senator Lawson and I were talking about some points about the issues of uh, the comments of Supreme Court justices. Uh, anyway, I'll just give you a I just want to give uh, the lawyers and some of our legislators food for thought. Um, I've heard it twice already from this morning up to now, uh, from this VHR also, that uh, we should study or we should criminalize red target. Uh, I think, uh, why don't you just file a libel case? Because if we criminalize uh, red tagging, we have to criminalize narcissist tagging and fascist tagging. Ano? Samantala, it falls in the category of libel. Or if I file a libel, I think that uh, should be a food for thought for those who are offended by being called reds. I, I don't know why. Ano? Um, uh, just uh, no, just uh, for the record, as they say, you know, in the, uh, so that you may uh, think about that instead of uh, uh, may, uh, having Congress discuss it and uh, file a case and uh, 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 file a bill criminalizing red tagging, which at this point would be very difficult to do. I think so. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senate President. Yes, Congress Mahanga. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Luckily, good point naman yung tanong ni Senate SP Soto. Ang unang problema dyan, Mr. Chair, iba ang red tagging sa ordinary expressions naman, mamamayan. Nabanggit nga kanina ng CHR. Ang red tagging ay yung paggamit ng government funds, public funds, government resources. Imimit mo yung DepEd, imimit mo yung DILG, lahat, Mr. Chair, to verify other people. So hindi siya kapareho doon sa level ng freedom of expression. So para sa akin, Mr. Chair, yun talaga yung main problem dito. At ang pangalawa, maliban siyempre sa claim ng mga media people na yung libel, eh, uh, hindi dapat i-criminalize yan, I also like to add, kasi dito, Mr. Chair, ang pwedeng defense lang palagi dyan nila as government officials kasi is good faith. Eh, public duty namin, Ganon, good faith ito. Kaya ang ordinaryong tao will have to hurdle that na parang eh, trabaho namin. Pero ang problema, Mr. Chair, is good faith yan, sabihin nyo. Eh, pero klaro naman, Mr. Chair, ang malis. Kaya, kaya yun ang isang reason bakit hindi madali. Ang alawa, lastly, yung mga ordinary people, hindi naman ganun kadali ang mag-file ng mga cases. So, hindi yan parang, hindi sila equal eh. Yung hindi, hindi sila pwedeng ipagtapi. Kaya, uh, you know, you have to look for lawyers, you have to look. Kaya nga, china-challenge na lang sila na, you know, if you think na tama yung ano nyo, then, kasi otherwise, magsasabi tayo, hindi, sige, pray for all tayo. Yung gulo ng bansa natin yan. Ayo, pwede niyong kanyan. Kasi sila, pwede rin. Hindi pwede, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Just to uh, rejoin the government is not exempt from libel. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, sure, I think we have one more. Ready na? Ready na yata. Okay. Baka pwede na po play. Uh, yung file po ni Feb niya. Congress Inaligible. Naglulok sa ako, sampo ng aking pamilya sa pagkamatay ng aking gusto. Walang kasing bigat ang aming dalamhati po nila marapat kong magsalita sa hiling na ito dahil paulit-ulit na pangbabastos at paniniras sa ating anak kahit siya ang patay. Nilit nung ko ginagamit, nilit ginagamit nung nagrinangririgtag ang pagkamatay niya para sa nagtag niya sa bayan niya. Sinasabi ng militaw, nung namatay daw ang aking anak sa isang ang encounter na nangyayon At para patutuhanan ang kanilang sinasabi, Walang awa nilang pinarada ang bangtay ng aking anak. Kasama ang diuman ng samsang na armas at kagamitan ng TAA. Pinas lang siya, ginawa pang propyo ng, ng video. Para lang magamit sa kanilang paninira sa aming tribo, sa aming pamilya at sa aming organisasyon. Mahal ko ang aking anak. Hindi ko siya kailanman ikahihiya o ikatakot. Nakuha ang nagpasilang sa kanya. Mabalit siya. Walang ibang hangad. Kundi ang matulungan ang mga lumad laban sa mga nang-aapi sa amin. Hindi siya tanga. 
na madaling madala, lalong hindi tipong na magpapalito o gulag ng susunod. Kaya hindi ko kailangan matanggap ang mga paratang sa kanya na siya ay narinlang lakang. Hindi madali para sa isang anak, para sa isang ina, namuwalay sa anak, na nagpas ng lumahok sa ibang uri ng pakitibaba. Pero kahit hindi ko ginusto, malagay sa pangani ang aking anak, na ko rin ang gumagabay sa kanina mula sa kanimpla ng unyan niyang pagtayo hanggang matuto siyang lumakad at lumakbo. Kaya nagpas siya ako ang higalan ng kanyang personal na desisyon. Hindi ako nagtulak sa kanya ang kalimapan. Hindi rin ang mga organitas pan. Ang nagtulak sa kanya Pinagkagislan niya ang busabos na kalagayan ng mga lumad. Isang palagi ang operasyon. Maritang operasyon. Ang pagpaslang sa aming kababayan at malubha at patuloy pang lumulubhang kahirapan sa aming lugar. Lumaban siya dahil sa balot na sistema nito Naging hindi siya. Salamat sa inyo mga kaulit na kaulit po rin. Kayo mga hindi na nakapaghintay na matapos na nila ang mga naming pangyaksa. At bigyan na bigyan na naman ang gamitin ang kanyang pagkanapay para bigyan na pangira na naman pangira at pangyaksa sa aming organisasyon. Pinaginan ko naman, walang pinalaman ang balangita na naging isisip ng aking anak. Hindi nga siya maaaring gamitin ibigin siya para para sa itabi ng mga mga organisasyon. Pagkat para sa mga mga disisip ng kanyang sinusunod, hindi sa atin, lalo't hindi sa bayan mo na. Gusto nyo itong bilang ng bayan nila sa Jibli? Hindi po! Intindihin nyo na ang hirap na pinagdadaan ng mga mga naman sa araw-araw. Ang ating anak ay hindi mo nang naman na tumulak sa gabing landas dahil hindi siya ang huli. Kaya ang mahilip pang nagmamansin sa kanya, yan ang araw. Ginawa ninyo ang pagmamalipit sa anak ko. Kung tataka ba kayo kung bakit ba hindi matapos-tapos ang ginagamahan sa ating bansa? Ginagamahan ako sa lahat. Sa aking pasiraan na din ako, ang aming pamilya at organisasyon. Bakit hindi natin harap po yung tunay na itaylan? Kung ba, bakit nasa gitna pa rin tayo na ipan dito sa atin? Sino ka rin yung bigyan pa rin sa ikulang dahil yung mga mga hirap? Lalo yung sumunta ko po. Lalo yung mga 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 Since John Gapa is not here, is represented by the Deputy Chief of Staff. Would you like to react? No more. Reserve that for later. Time, time mo na nila. Congressman na Colonaris, please. Mr. Chair, uh, na-mention lang kasing pangalan ko kanina ni Mr. Selig. So I 
felt it na necessary din na mag-rejoinder ako. Ang problema una, kasi sabi ni Mr. Celis, pumunta ako sa Iloilo to meet with the CPP committee doon uh, during 2001 uh, election, uh, electoral. Mr. Chair, hindi totoo na pumunta ako sa Iloilo para makipag-meet sa mga CPP committees, Mr. Chair. Ang problema ni Mr. Celis, lahat ng meeting na aatinan niya, madali niya lang sabihin underground meeting yan eh. Kahit na election man yan o ano pa man. So, yan ang first problem. Ang second problem, Mr. Chair, ni Mr. Celis, is pasap na ang kredibilidad niya. Una, si Una niyang sinabi, October 27, sa DCRH interview with Deo Makalma, 27 years siya sa CPP NPA. 2001 daw o 1991 daw to 2015. Ngayon, ang problema ni Mr. Celis dyan, eh 2010 pa lang, kilalang kilala na siya ang political operator sa Iloilo. Kaya hindi pwedeng eh, na national operations command ng NPA. At in fact, na-demote pa nga siya. Dahil uh, sa kanyang public na pagbira sa mga kalaban ni Mayor Mabilo. So, paano na mamareconcile isang NPA, NOC command, pero at the same time, very public at controversial na figure? Ang dagdag pa, si Attorney Pahilka mismo nagsabi na di ba 2008 pa lang, uh, etc., tuturo ka na ng English sa mga Korean students. So, paano ka? So, yun yung una. Kaya hindi niyan matanggi-tanggi yun, Mr. Chair. Pagdating dito sa Senado, nagbago ang istorya. Ang sinabi niya actually 15 years na lang pala. From, 2000, uh, from 1991 to 2006, sabi niya pumunta siya kay Secretary Raul Gonzalez. Ngayon, nung sinabi ko dito sa hearing na o di kung 2006 ka pala umali sa CPP-NPA, pa Paano mo ka magkaroon ng personal knowledge sa akin? Ang termino ko ay yung simula lang ng 2007. Ang sagot niya dito sa Senate at nung sa transcript niya, actually 2008 pala ako umalis. Yan ang problema, Mr. Chair, kasi gusto nila itong mga public forums na ito, itong mga debates na ito, kasi pwede sila magbago-bago ng kwento eh. At hirap yun pag hindi sila pumupunta sa cortex, si madali lang magbago. Ngayon sabihin niya, actually, ang una kong sinabi, para lang yan matago ang sarili kong identity, hindi naman talaga totoo yun. Ang problema, Mr. Xie, kailan ka nagsasabi ng totoo, kailan ka naman nagsasabi ng hindi totoo. And Mr. Xie, ang hirap ng ganito. In the first transcript, sinabi mo 2006. In the second transcript, sinabi mo 2008. So yun lang, Mr. Xie. At kanina may nabanggit, although hindi maklaro yung pagkarinig ko, may sparo na pumatay ng aktivista. E di, ngayon lang ako nakarinig, Mr. Chair, wala akong alam na kaso na pinafailan ng kaso ang isang NPA sa pagpatay ng aktivista. Pero ang problema dito, Mr. Chair, is this, nabanggit din yung pangalan ko kasi sa Negros daw. Hindi lang, katulad ng sinabi ng CHR, hindi lang ito guilt by association, pati pala guilt by geographical location, Mr. Chair. So yun lang po ang rejoinder ko and I hope na pagbigyan din ang ibang kasamahan ko na magsalita on their respective statements lalo ng pag-summarize dito, Mr. Chair. Thank you po. Mr. Chair, just, just to conclude our presentation, uh, we will just like to give some recommendations for the committee if you would allow, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> uh, balikan ho lang natin yung 2008 recommendations ni UN Special Rapporteur Philip Alston, which are very clear and remain relevant to this day. And I would like to quote, the government should immediately direct all military officers to cease making public statements linking political or other civil society groups to those engaged in armed insurgencies. Any such characterizations belong solely within the power of the civilian authorities. They must be based on transparent criteria and conform with the human rights provisions of the Constitution and relevant treaties. 
Web tagging, Mr. Chair, replaces civilian court proceedings with milit military-style PSY-OPS or PSY-WAR operations. Sa pamamagitan po ng red tagging, ang mga proseso ng ating mga korteng civil ay pinapalitan ng PSY-WAR operations. The security sector's determination of what they call communist support or terrorist support is made without clear standards, without admissible evidence as uh, admitted uh, themselves, and outside what is contained or defined in the law. Gusto natin dinan na ang AFP at PNP, maging ang NTF, LCAP, NICA at NSC, ay hindi po mga korte. Hindi sila dapat pinapayagan na gumawa ng determination of guilt based merely on hearsay and inadmissible evidence. Neither should they or their target or their agents engage in extrajudicial killings based on this flawed determination of guilt. Hindi dapat, uh, na, hindi dapat napahintulutan na sila ay maging complainant, prosecutor, judge, and executor at the same time, base lamang sa mga hearsay, inadmissible, incredible, and incompetent evidence in grave violation of the basic tenets of due process and presumption of innocence na nakasaad sa ating saligang batas. From the Alston recommendations, Mr. Chair, we can say that government agencies, especially the uniformed units, should immediately end the practice of red tagging and terrorist labeling, whatever they call it, of activists, the opposition, and government critics. This should mean, one, uh, we recommend that they cease using their official social media pages and sites for the purpose of vilification of activists. Military and police units should be required to adhere to existing social media community standards as well as the code of ethical conduct for public officials. In fact, Facebook itself has uh, 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 the, the listed several of these accounts traced to the military. Number two, state forces must not weaponize social media, engage in coordinated inauthentic behavior, and spread spread fake news. Ito po yung dahilan kung bakit dinaw yung mga sites. Number three, the AFP and PNP should end the practice of red tagging, guilt by association, and terrorist labeling using posters and streamers. And these are what the um, uh, witnesses said earlier. Uh, this should also include the persona non grata streamers that undermine the authority of the LGUs. Number four, the AFP should also end the policy of forced or fake surrenderies as exemplified by the floating surrenderies from Asbate who were photoshopped by the military and the forced surrenders of non-combatants in Bulacan, for example, or Cagayan Valley. Congress should review appropriations for the ICIP as the questionable surrenders make the program prone to corruption. Number five, there should be a swift investigation into the killings of unarmed activists. The principle of command responsibility should be observed in areas where there has been a high incidence of extrajudicial killings of activists. Very clearly, the issuance of AO number 35 that creates the Interagency Committee on Extrajudicial Killings, Enforced Disappearance, Torture, and Other Grave Violations of Human Rights of Rights to Life, Liberty, and Security to Persons did not resolve these cases of Egypt case. It, in fact, to stop this political violence. We strongly recommend, Mr. Chair, the creation of an independent commission that will investigate these cases of EJKs and forced disappearances and other rights violations. Number six, the Philippine government must uphold the right to organize, unionize, freedom of association, and academic freedom in schools. Legal organizations should not be the subject of harassment, surveillance, and demonization. And number seven, Congress to pass the Human Rights Defenders Bill, authored here by uh, in the Senate by Repres uh, Senator Lila de Lima, that principally aimed at providing mechanisms that will protect the life, liberty, and security of human rights advocates and defenders in the conduct of their work. In relation, relation to leg legislation, Mr. Chair, maybe the Senate would also like this to study the possibility of that proposed uh, measure, of a proposed measure to uh, prohibit red tagging. Sa kabuuan, um, Mr. Chair, dapat ay panindigan ng, ng Philippine government ang kanyang mga obligasyon 
sa International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the International Covenant on Social, Economic, Cultural Rights. Dapat ay panindigan din ng pamahalaan ang nilalaman ng Comprehensive Agreement on the Respect for Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law na isang landmark agreement na nilagdaan noong 1998 sa pagitan ng gobyerno at ng National Democratic Front. At this point, we would like to address what we believe to be is the underlying issue in the practice of red tagging and terrorist labeling, the existence of armed conflict in our country. Limang dekada na po itong armed conflict na ito at tulad ng nasabi na marami na hong namatay, marami ng uh, uh, counterinsurgency plans and government deadlines ang lumipas pero hindi pa ho natatapos ang gera. Ang, ang pinakasentrong tanong po na mananatili pa rin hanggang sa ngayon, bakit patuloy pa rin ang armadong tunggalian sa ating bayan? At ano ang pwedeng gawin para ito ay mabigyan ng solusyon o katugunan? Kami po ay naniniwala na ang uh, katanungan o usapin ng armadong paglaban ng mga revolusyonaryo ay hindi isang legal or moral question. Ito ay isang political and historical uh, issue. We have always recognized that our struggle exists because of certain social conditions. Katulad ng malawakang matinding kahirapan, kawalan ng hostesya, oppression, human rights violations. Kaya po mas mainam sa palagay namin at mahalaga na matagunan ang mga social conditions na ito. Sa halip na gumawa ng mga sweeping condemnations of uh, the struggle, of engaging in red tagging, or uh, intensified militarization. Ang pagkunduna sa mga nakikibakang armado ay totoo lamang sa tahasang pagkaila uh, at hindi pagkilala sa ugat bakit mayroong armadong tunggalian sa ating bayan. Condemning it will shut the door to a possible political statement. Now the question is taking up terrorism sa ating pong paniniwala, not necessarily Uh, terrorism is well defined. We actually have now a new anti-terrorism law. The right, the right to rebel against an oppressive government is accepted even internationally, in the same way as the right to secede and the right to self-determination are also recognized. Nations were born through armed conflict. None of these were considered legal at the time. It would only be later in the history that would judge the correctness of such actions. Ang pinakamabisang paraan para masolusyonan ang problema ng armadong tanggatunggalian ay tugunan ang mga ugat nito. Sa loob ng mahigit limang dekada na ginamit ang pamalaan ang mainly militaristang approach, sa problema, hindi ho nalutas ang problema. Working for peace costs less in terms of government resources and human lives. Kaya po, minumungkahin namin at inihikayat ang national government na buksan muli at ituloy, ituloy ang usapang pangkapayapaan para matugunan ang sinasabi nating roots of the armed conflict. The peace talks were so close to forging an interim peace agreement that would achieve important gains for the people in terms of socio-economic reforms. I'm talking about the last rounds. This would have been a major step in addressing the social basis of the armed conflict. The interim peace agreement, uh, na hindi na ho napirmahan, would also have led to coordinated ceasefire between the two parties in the armed conflict. Uh, bago po kinansila o binasura ni Pangulong Duterte ang peace talks, ang bahagi ng usapin tungkol sa kasunduan ay patungkol sa agrarian reform, rural development, national industrialization, at uh, na-initial na po yung peace agreement ng negotiators. And there were optimistic projections of a ceremonial signing that could have been done in the country. Uh, no Christmas po, New Year ng 2019, nagkaroon pa ng iwalay na ceasefires. Uh, yung dalawang partido bilang confidence building measures. Nagkaroon pa ng separate ceasefire declarations simula ng COVID, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Sa kabila ko ng mga ganong positive development sana, the hawks and militarists in the cabinet were opposed to this trap as military operations continued and skirmishes happened during the pandemic. The hawks in the cabinet, Mr. Chair, and the NTF FLAC were determined to see that the peace talks failed. Dahil sa totoo lang naman, kung may peace talks in place, mawawala na po ng silbi ang NTF LCAC. Kung ang kapayapaan ay kayang maabot at makabit sa negotiating table, sa pamamagitan ng isang political statement, bakit pa kakailanganin ang isang NTF LCAC? Bakit kailangan pa gumastos ng 19 billion para dito? So Mr. Chair, marina naming nire-recommenda 
na kasabay ng iba pang mga recommendations, buwagi na rin po ang NTFLCAC. At sa halip ay reconsider ng GRP ang uh, pag-resume ng peace negotiations para matugunan na ang ugat ng armadong tunggalian sa ating bayan. We propose that the government also withdraw Executive Order 70 and similar issuances and pick up where the peace negotiations left off. Ang ibig pong sabihin nito ay itulak po natin bilang panimula ang minimum agreement for socio-economic reforms which already had been initialed. Uh, the freedom of uh, political prisoners and the interim peace agreement that includes a coordinated ceasefire. These are all doable measures, Mr. Chair, that are far more beneficial than the military's Mr. Chairman, uh, this is the uh, on the side of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Jeffelyn uh, Uliama died as a combatant member of a non-state armed group, the CPP and PA, already declared armed terrorist organization. Contrary to the statement of uh, Representative Uliama, the AFP did not cause the suffering of her daughter. She died in the midst of a legitimate gun battle with soldiers of the 3rd Special Forces Battalion of the Philippine Army. The AFP responded to reports of civilians and village officials about the presence of armed groups in their community, which disturbs the peace and tranquility in their area. The NPA's presence in their community violate, violated the provision of Republic Act 9851, which says these armed groups are not allowed in non-defended localities or they pose a safety and security threat to the people in the communities. Mr. Chairman, our soldiers perform their constitutional mandate as the protector of our people and we remain as the protector of the people, and we stand by our mandate also to secure the sovereignty of the state and the integrity of the national territory. Did you, you know, the delegation, did your people in the armed forces desecrate the lifeless body of? Uh, no, we did not, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we treated the, the body of uh, Javelin Kuliama with, with respect and dignity. In fact, our soldiers carried her body uh, for almost half a day just to make sure that her body will reach uh, the okay. family. Based on the uh, after operations report, can you narrate to us the sequence of events para lang malinaw sa committee kung ano talaga nangyari? Um, so I have the uh, after operations report uh, which shall be the committee. It's a long, uh, yung salient, sabi nga particularly on that portion. Nung napatay na, ano nangyari? Anong ginawa ng mga sundalo na sa ground? Yes, Mr. Chairman, let me just uh, go through my notes. Si alam mo, Vice Admiral Kagawan, the secretion of a lifeless body is not only un-Filipino, it is un-Christian. That's why I want you to respond to that allegation or to the statement of Representative Kulyamat because coming from her, an elected uh, representative, mas mabuti address niyo yan, di ba? Yes, Mr. Chairman, are you pretty? Sige. Who wants to talk first? Yusek Badu. Mr. Chair, uh, we, as as part of NTF LCAP, we did get a report about this, and um, the body of Je Je Jevelyn was abandoned by her comrades. So uh, instead of leaving the body there, the our soldiers, the, the men and women, uh, the soldiers of the AFP, 
uh, took the body, wrapped it very gently with with a with a uh, very respectfully with a blanket, and and uh, she was brought down. I mean, they could have left her there, but when you ask them why did you not just leave them, they said, well, we had to bring her back to her family so that she could get a proper burial. So, and if you put in a wrong tropeo or anything like that, that's not true at all. Yes, yeah, Perlade, related. Uh, yes, sir, additional long. We are in touch with uh, Colonel uh, Balbayan, the uh, commander of the uh, Special Forces. They have to carry the body five hours, uh, walk five hours. And in fact, uh, they were able, they were met by uh, Jesrin, one of the uh, sons of uh, Rep Koyama, and they were very thankful for taking care of the cadaver of, uh, of uh, Javelin and for providing all the assistance so that they will be able to see the uh, lifeless body of uh, their sister. So it's not true that the uh, armed forces of the Philippines, the AP and the SF battalion desecrated the, the body. In fact, uh, they afforded her all the respect and all the uh, all the uh, assistance uh, that, uh, that uh, they have to do to make sure that uh, uh, she will have a decent burial. Yes, but Mr. Chairman, I am now hear the. Uh, yeah, because all the lines are directly from the after operations report. Yes, okay. yes, Mr. Chairman, I have the summary of events. Uh, it was an encounter and a discovery of an enemy hideout on 28, 1600 November 2020. For the summary of events, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. On 28-1600 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon of November 2020, an encounter of the Special Forces Team 702, led by Sergeant Mark Anthony Azuela, Philippine Army, against 30 CNTs of uh, SYP Platoon Guerrilla Front 19 under Mario Himo Jr., Aka Kobe, or Renren, at vicinity, there's a grid coordinate here, Your Honor, but it's in Sicho, Mabo, Barangay, San Isidro, Marihatag, Surigao del Sur, that resulted to the recovery of five high-powered firearms and one CNT kill. On 29-10-30, November 2020, the Special Forces Team 702, led by Sergeant Asuela, Together with the Special Forces Team uh, 3301, led by Staff Sergeant Gabriel, discovered an abandoned uh, CNT hideout there with an estimated area of about 200 square meters with strong signal of glow, having two kitchens, 22 tents during their clearing operations and scouring on the encounter site. On 29-1200 November 2020, engaged troops of the Special Forces Team 702 under Sergeant Asuela arrived at designated casualty collection point at uh, Sicho Nabu, Barangay San Isidro, Marihatag, Surigao del Sur, bringing along with them a CNT cadaver. On 29-1220 November 2020, Engaged troops of us, Special Forces Team 702 under Sergeant Asuela arrived at mission support site along with a cadaver that was later identified as Javelin Campos Culiamat, alias Rep, medic of SYP Platoon Guerrilla Front 19, 22 years old and a resident of Sicho Kiwagan. Marangay San Isidro, Lianga, Surigao del Sur. The identification was confirmed by nine former rebels of the 401st Brigade and further revealed as the youngest child of Bayern Muna Party List Representative Euphemia Kuliamat. And the result of the operation, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. On the government side, negative casualty. On the enemy side, one killed or body count identified as Javelin Campos Kuliama. Captured items and other war materials are three AK-47 rifles, 
one M14 rifle, one M653 caliber 5.56, 11 backpacks, four IEDs, or improv improvised explosive device, anti-personal mines, five blasting caps, 30 meters electric wire, 11 magazines of M14 rifle, seven magazines of M14 rifles, five bundle years, 249 ammunition for AK-47 rifle, three CPP NPA NDF flags, three cell phones, two commercial handheld radios, four rice pots, assorted food supplies, assorted medical supplies, and lastly, your, your honors, subversive documents. This is the summary of the after operation report, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's bringing the body of uh, a Kia, you know, so enemy side, to the family a standard procedure. Uh, as much as possible, uh, Mr. Chairman, we really can identify at once under the land. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Otherwise, anong ginagawa ng troops natin sa ground? Um, we, uh, usually, Mr. Chairman, we uh, bring it to a uh, criminal parlor for proper uh, burial. In this case, kasi identified later, sabi mo, as that of uh, the daughter of the of representative Kulyamat, minabutin yung ihatid sa bahay? Is that what happened? Mr. Chairman? Yes. As, an, uh, as a standard operating procedure, when our troops uh, discover cadavers, we bring them down uh, on the principle that we have to give dignity to the cadaver and be interred uh, with honor, even if the, they are rebels. We also recover wounded and bring them to the nearest uh, hospital. Those are SOPs of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Unlike uh, people who kill indigenous peoples and even goats, the ice, and this is particularly true in the case of Dato Jomar Bocades, who is the who is also in the same locality. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, Marihatag has been cited as the site of several CPP NPA anniversaries. And the encounter happened in that area. So that is really a guerrilla base, an encampment. And so if there are insinuations that uh, there were it was not a real encounter or there was disrespect. That is not in the SOP of the armed forces. Long time ago, we, we know the ramifications of desecrating uh, cadavers. Uh, we do not do that in the armed forces in the Philippines. Mr. Chair, just, just for the record, Mr. Chair, I would be submitting to the committee the picture that was uh, posted on the various sites of the AFP and even the Philippine News Agency showing the body of uh, Jenigen Kuyamat spread wala pong balot uh, so I don't know where uh, Under Secretary Badoy got the idea that they binalot daw nila sa pumot ito po ay walang balot in front of 11 men at kasama po sa nakahanay sa bangkay ni Jenny Lynn ay yung iba't ibang mga materyales na kanilang nakumpiska. It is a post photo. It is a war trophy kind of photo. Uh, the faces of the men are blacked out, probably to show that they are not smiling. But it certainly appears that they are very proud. And I think this is what Congresswoman Kuljamat pointed out na na-desecrate ang katawan. If it were for mere identification, Mr. Chair, they could have took the picture bakit nag-post pa sa harap ng labing isang mga sundalo, bakit pinost pa ito sa social media, bakit pinadala sa Philippine News Agency at pinakalat ng Philippine News Agency. I think that is the complaint of uh, Congresswoman Kulyamat. So I will be submitting this, Mr. Chair. And the Secretary is going I think it's really funny how Teddy Casino finds it finds a photo more of more no, offensive. No, there's nothing funny about this. Sorry, sorry. 
but uh, finish her statement. He finds it more a photo more offensive of a of a 22 year old that was slain rather than a slain 22 year old for a cause that's that's senseless. He he will not he will not condemn it. That's that's the, that's the outrage here. There are no winners in this war. If you think that NTF LCAP is goading, is we were gloating because a 22 year old child died because just because she's an NPA, you are so wrong. This is a tragedy, and there are no winners in this war. Thank you. Yes, John Perlade. Mr. Chair, on that statement that the soldiers were seeing that photo with the uh, covered faces, that's not because they are smiling, but that's because that's standard operating procedure on Special Operation Forces. You know that because I, I'm also a member of that unit once, and we don't do that to uh, to our enemy, even if they're dead or captured. Now, the only reason that we took those pictures is to make sure and to have a, an evidence that Jubilee died with an, a firearm sling in his body. No other purpose for that. Mr. Chairman, aren't we straying away from the the sense of the hearing? It's about the issue of red tagging. Uh, nagkakaroon tuloy na sagutan dito na para tayong, ano, para tayong hindi uh, in, a, um, in a parliament, uh, in parliamentary procedures are not filed. Uh, I think we should uh, um, call it to order and go back to the subject matter. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Senate President, with your indulgence, I'd like to put uh, this whole thing in perspective. This is not the first time that the, these groups, uh, the, the Bakabayan Bloc and groups uh, that are identified with them, have brought the government to court for red tagging. They've done it uh, with President Arroyo, with President Aquino, and now they're doing it with us. And if you don't mind, could I kindly read? Uh, they did it with us, and I would like to read the decision of the court, if you don't mind. Okay, so this is Karapatan, Philippines, Rural Missionaries, Gabriela et al. versus the President and the rest, General uh, Secretary Esperon and the rest. So, okay, petitioners here allege that they were viciously red tagged as front organizations of the CPP, NPA, NDF which puts their life, liberty, and security at risk. The Court of Appeals ruled, and I'm quoting, there is no substantial evidence to establish the petitioner's allegations. With the foregoing in mind, this court finds that the allegations in the petition and documents submitted did not fulfill the evidentiary standard to establish that petitioner's right to life, liberty, security, and privacy were violated or threatened by the respondents. There is no evidence of extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances, arbitrary arrests, malicious prosecutions, and defamations. First, the petitioner's general statements that some incidents of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances of human rights workers happened during the present administration are empty averments. The case, as the case briefs attached to the petition are self-serving being entirely prepared by the petitioners and their organizations. Verily, the petitioners' bare allegations are not facts and do not have probative value to justify the issuance of the extraordinary writs. The broad generalizations of alleged threats and violations border on the contemptuous and do not deserve any judicial action. Second, there was no evidence that the alleged killings and disappearances are on account of the victim's membership in organizations tagged as legal fronts of the communist and terrorist groups. The petitioners merely lumped together the purported violations and threats against individual officers and members absent proof that they were, that they were committed because of their humanitarian works. Third, the supposed inclusion of petitioners' names in the gallery of activists and communist rebels fail to demonstrate an actual threat to their life, liberty, and security. Here, the inclusion of petitioners' names in the gallery likewise has no direct relation to the circumstances of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances. 
there is no evidence that the petitioners have been susceptible to harassment and to increased police surveillance because of the gallery. It is settled that the alleged threat to petitioners' rights, rights to life, liberty, and security must be actual and not merely one of suppo supposition or with the likelihood of happening. Fourth, the petitioners anchored their threat, their fear on Trump charges against them to justify their detention. The petitioners submitted online news articles with their statements accusing the government of illegal arrests. However, the filing of cases cannot be characterized as an unlawful act or omission. The fact remains that the charges against the petitioners are duly filed and ruled upon. The cited arrest, detention, and prosecution of the individual officers and members are lawful. The pending petition for prescription is a remedy provided by the law. The creation of the NTFL cap is pursuant to a legitimate state objective to maintain peace and order. Yet, the petitioners failed to show how the legal cases against them translates to threats of extra illegal killings and enforced disappearances. On the other hand, the respondents sufficiently explained that the investigations conducted were in relation to the criminal cases in which the petitioners were implicated. Hold on. The Supreme Court rule this is another one. The petitioner's general statements to the effect that 143 members of Bayan Muna, this is in another administration, were victims of extrajudicial killings during the Arroyo administration and that 12 members and leaders of Bayan Muna have been killed under the Aquino administration, 15 from, that two, from 2015 to 2000, 2010 to 2015, more than 150 peasant leaders, farmers, and fisher folks have been killed while scores of others have suffered from other forms of abuses. Um, uh, um, okay. Mere membership to these organizations or sectors cannot equate to an actual threat that would warrant the issu issuance of a writ of amparo. And um, moreover, the fact of death of one of the Karapatans workers without corroborative, corrobor corroborative evidence that his death was an account, on account of his membership in Karapatan is not an actual threat that would pass the test of substantial evidence, on and on. And they know this, yet they, 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 keep, they keep using that word red tagging, even though our law, our courts of law have already ruled very clearly that what they have is, is amorphous, it's, it's just part of the imagination. And why do they do that? They do that because it silences us. And how can we do that, Mr. Chair, when it's our job to protect the Filipino people. Now, we, ha you, you, we have to be free to give our people the accurate information because there is verifiable, verifiable proof that our children are really being recruited by Gabriela, by Anuna, app, app teachers, all of that, and they become NPAs and then they die. Well, this, is, this is part of our job. Hey, thank you. Now, okay, since, Mr. Chair, since, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair a very brief say, say yeah, comment, Mr. Really. Chair. I've been sabi sabinasa ni Yusek Badoy, I've been abasa niya yung isang Supreme Court uh, uh, resolution on a petition for rate of amparo by a number of human rights workers. Uh, tama siya, ganun pa naging uh, ruling dismiss and uh, Yusek Badoy says amorphous daw yung claims uh, ng mga petitioners. Let me just point out for a fact, as, as a fact Na isa sa mga petitioners na humihingi sana ng rate of amparo bilang protection sa kanya, si Zara Alvarez. Uh, sometime later, she was in fact killed after being red tag, Mr. Chair. So let me just put that on the record. Mr. Chair, uh, may we uh, rejoin her from the, the left? Who has to... Okay, okay. here's the situation now. Huh? We're done with the presentation of the Makabayan Block. Naputol yung presentation kanina ng security sector because of technical difficulties. Would you like to proceed with that remaining presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you can present that and then we go back to question and answer uh, uh, part 
kung meron pa mga tanong or may mga rejoinders. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, while uh, James Durimon is preparing, I'd just like to again go back to the last hearing words. Jim Lindo of uh, Gabriela is again uh, saying something like uh, Honeymade Suaso, Kaparatan, uh, Karapatan Secretary General in, um, in, in Mindanao is missing, as if saying that the AAP took her. But she didn't, she is not saying anything about the malversation case that Honeymade Suaso is facing with the CPP for malversing the funds of Karapatan as well as the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines. Now, I'd like, I'm saying, and I'm telling you this, sir, because uh, I'm sure Anime Suazo will be again a target of liquidation. Or, uh, uh, even, uh, uh, yes. Please go, uh, please go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. James uh, Duros. Sige, James, proceed. Technical, uh, nandun siya yung naka-crew ka, please, yung kanina magsasalita ng naputol. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, may, may I make a brief correction to my Sige. statement earlier? Yeah, good. While waiting. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, earlier, I, men I mentioned that uh, uh, you said that the way was quoting a Supreme Court decision dismissing the writ of amb Amparo case. That is not I was informed that, that that is inaccurate. In fact, it is a court of appeals uh, decision that she was reading, and that that uh, uh, decision is under appeal, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make that correction. Sure, Mr. Chair. But it was short, lang. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, kanina was actually not a decision. Doon sa red tagging, it was a decision based sa sinabi ni, ni ng defense sector na ito ay hindi mo malink yung red tagging sabi ng korte doon sa threat against life, liberty, and security at yun naman ang rules doon sa rito ng paro so hindi niya, niya sinabi na walang red tag yung sinasabi niya lang pag na red tag ka hindi kayo nakapagproduce ng ebidensya na siya ay may threat sa life, liberty, and security and in fact Later on, may namatay na nga na isa ng petitioners doon. Uh, yan ay under appeal then. In the same way, yung DOJ, inappeal din siyempre ng defense sector sa Secretary of Justice. Pero ang sabi ng defense sector, Mr. Chair, eh, so, hindi kami nagre-red tag pala. Uh, di, ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na sabihin namin, mag-red tag kayo, sabihin nila, walang katapusang paulit-ulit, Mr. Chair, na hindi sila nagre-rent ang truth tagging ito at ang mga biktima naman ni Nasser. Just to clarify that point, Mr. Chair, na that was not an all force sa decision ng, court, ng korte dun sa rito ng paro na yan. Salamat po. So, Chairman, uh, baka may technical problem pa kaya na-rejoined her dun kanina sa society, Mr. Nero Colmenares. Anong gagawin natin kay sino yan, James? Baka na-arrange pa ang technical Okay. Uh, Richard, uh, ano lang sir, nakamit lang yung uh, computer niya.
you better value it up, we cannot wait all day, ya. Mr. Chairman. Oke. Okay. Uh, I having been uh, secretary for uh, the peace process as a peace uh, advisor. May I... Sorry, what did you say? I, I was uh, the presidential advisor for the peace process. Uh, may I just uh, make a comment on their recommendation for peace talks? Okay, proceed. Uh, Mr. Uh, Asinio was, of course, uh, recommending for the peace talks as the solution to all of the region. The region is ready to go. Besides, uh, you can also submit your recommendation. Yes. Uh -oh. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I take this opportunity to say that uh, we would like to submit a copy, to, a copy of the comprehensive agreement for economic reforms as they are referring to, so that we can show that it is actually a call for a coalition government. That is what the president rejected. Uh, we will have that submitted uh, to the committee, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, so noted. If uh, the constitution of the CPP Communist Party has not been submitted, Mr. Chair, was submitted uh, during the last hearing. Thank you very by much. By C. Canway. Yeah, according to the committee secretary, the problem is not here. It's not the end of it. Mr. Chair, can we manifest? Yeah. <laughs> oh, one minute, Lapo, sir. Okay, one minute. Uh, this is all about who they should be tagging. Uh, when I say that, for example, Mr. Chairman, anyone here in the Senate that is not connected in a way in the CPP, maybe it is worth tagging. But when I say that the Makabayan Black representatives are members and pillars of the CPP, I am not retagging them, but I am, but I am anti identifying them that indeed they are truly members and pillars of the CPP. Thank you. Magandang hapon po sa lahat, uh, lalong lalo na sa ating Mr. Chair at uh, sa ating mga pagalanggalang na Senador. Uh, ako po si James Cogonundo Raymond. Uh, dating kasabi po ng CPP and PNDF. At uh, narecruit ako nung minor date pa lang ako. ako. Na 14 years old pa lang. So, mag full time ako nung, ano, nung panahong 2017, January 24. At uh, doon ko, nung akong pasok do, sa CPP, eh, sa CPP and PNDF, uh, puro Tama naman lahat yung sinabi nila pero sa, nagtagal na ako doon. Doon ako nakakita ng mga anti-government na pagsasalita at hanggang nagiging sparrow ko ako. Ano, sa, nagiging special party so ano unit ako. So doon ko na kikita ang kamalian at na ginagawa ng CPP and PNDA po. So nung nasa Partisano unit po ako. Ang doon ko nakita ang mga kamalian na hindi dapat ginagawa kasi yung propaganda ng CPP and PA is para sila, para sa ating kaunlaran pero nung nagtagal na ako doon, nung nasa Sparrow na ako, nakikita ko na hindi sila para sa kaunlaran, kaunlaran at hindi sila para sa mga tao. So Na, nung nasa Sparrow po ako, na ano, nakita ko po yung pag, ano, pag pamatay ng tao kasi kami yung inuutosan ni nila Ka Dodo o kay si Ramon Bilian at, at si Ka Ilay na si Charity Amakan. Sina, inuutosan kami nila na pag meron silang pinababa na order na galing sa kanila na merong taong nakahadlang o asset ng militar na kailangan nating itumba 
So, yun yung ginagawa namin. So, ma- kad- dalawang bisis po yung nung nangyari na in, pa, sa pag-utos nila, sinasabi nila sa amin, gamitin namin yung gamitin namin yung uniforme ng pulis at sa sundalo. Nung, nung ano po, nung 2018, November po, doon sa barangay Bagong Silang po, ginagamit namin yung ano ng pulis po. Kasi yan yung order na binaba sa amin, nila Charity Amakan at ni Ramon Villar. At dalo, sa ano po, pangalawa po, ginagamit namin yung no, yung uniforme ng sundalo noong 2019 na March po. So, doon ko nakikita na ginagawa nilang ano ginagawa nilang propaganda ang mga ginagawa ng CPP, NP, NDF na paggamit sa mga uniforme ng ating kapulisan at kasundaluhan. Doon ko, doon ako nag doon ko nakita ang mga pagkakamali na ginagawa ng CPP, NP, NDF. Kaya ako bumaba dahil hindi ko na po kaya yung ginagawa namin na bilang isang kasapi sa CPP, NP, NDF po. Kaya nagbumaba ako at nagbalik loob ako sa ating panggoberno dahil gusto gusto ko po yung kapayapaan at kaunlaran ng ating lipunan. Kaya andito po ako, nandito po ako ngayon kasi gusto na gusto ko pong ipaabot sa lahat na kailangan kailangan nating wakasan ang ginagawa ng CPP, NP, NDF po. Kaya sa sa lahat po ng nandito po ngayon at lalo na, lalong lalo na kay Mr. Char at sa ating kay Galang-Galang na Senator Tinggo po. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ano yung pangalan mo, James? James? James, ano? James, uh, ano? Pagpatawad mo, no, pero gusto ko lang malaman na ilan ang pinatay mo ng mong sparo ka? Uh, sir, uh, nung nasa sparo po ako, sir, eh, pito na po yung na, napag-utosan kami, sir. Pit, pito na sila yung na ano namin, sir, na tinrabaho namin, sir. Bakit kayo kailangan mag-uniforme ng pulis o ng armed forces? Sino ba yung pinapatay niyo? Mga, mga civilian po, sir, o sinasa, sinasabi nila mga asit daw ng militar o yan yung sabi ng aming pinuno na si Charity Amakan at si Ramon Villas, sir. E bakit nga kailangan mo ginipolbe kayo ng police o ng armed forces? Kasi, kasi sir, uh, yun yung ginagawa nilang propaganda sa mamamayan. Kasi pag makita, kasi nakita ng mamamayan na sundalo yung pumatay sa civilian kaya madali silang ma- madali makuha ang loob nila sa CPP, NP, NDF, sir. Yan yung ginagamit na propaganda sa CPP, NP, NDF para uminit ang dugo ng ating mamayan sa ating kapulisan at sa ating kasundaluhan, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, James. Maraming salamat. I guess we have covered enough and uh, the committee has enough materials to prepare a committee report unless we still have some more presentations to make. We will just adjourn this uh, hearing about the security sector. Kulang pa ba yung oras ninyo? Kasi ready na kami gumawa Ready na yung committee magawa ng committee report. Secretary Alex Sir wants to. We are ready to present. Atay ko na. Si Secretary Anyo pala. No, he was raising no, no. his hand. Secretary Anyo. I still don't have Secretary Anyo. Si Alin Kapoyan, Mr. Chairman. De, Secretary Anyo yung nakikiusap kanina. Tapos na si Secretary Anyo. I, I, I will give my time to uh, Secretary Kapoyan. Yan ako na, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sige. Okay. Uh, okay. Secretary Alin. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, this is actually a, a presentation uh, to explain the interconnectivity of uh, the CPP, NPA, NPA, and the and the fund organization. Kala ko yun na na-present na na kanina ni Noel. This is uh, more than ito. This is more than ito. When you, yung video presentation mo, look similar eh. This is more detailed. Uh, part in partial lang po yung kanina, Mr. Chairman. Mas comprehensive po. Mas detalyado ito? Yes po. Ah, sige. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pag military ng briefing, to be honest, ha, it's boring. <laughs> si Takamichi, you know, the, the Director General Monte Aguto. Takamichi. Uh, the Executive Director of the NTF Alcap. Yeah, si Alin. CIP uh, Chairman. Current uh, Mr. President, the chairman. Alan. Good. Alan, good. Totoro Pelta. What's your name? Anna Kamuta. Good, Alan. Nasa screen as your pose. Maka nakamute ka dyan, uh, Mr. Chairman, Alin. Yun na yung screen niya. Oh. Alin, break. Uh, audio. Gusto niyo pa bang i-present to o sa video na lang sa committee? Si Senate President, papuntang Malacanang, may alas 5 to doon. Ayoko naman may iwanan mag-isa dito. <laughs> so, Alan, can you present? Can you start in one minute? O Joe, mayroon pang... I don't, si I don't think he hears you eh. Yung hindi na kami yun. Yung hindi na kami yun. Alan, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. 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 One more try, Alan, then uh, we cannot really wait here. Uh, mayroon pang ibang... Parang ano to, ah? Parang passcode sa cellphone, <laughs> tatlong pwede, <pedyo>, wala na. Ito sa kitang ko Mr. Chair, Chairman, uh, if I may... Uh, I may I Okay. Well, over here. Uh, can you can you see the screen, sir? I am now at the international Just 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 screen. Just see your screen, now, Len. I sir. Di makita. Ito lang nakikita namin.
Eh, yata ko yung tatalo eh. Ano sir, maramaro na. Ito sir, makikita na sir. Okay, alin. Thank you Mr. Senate President. Makikita nyo po ako sir. At saka yung screen. Please proceed. Please proceed alin. Nakikita na namin. Okay sir. There is the CTG's doctrinal principles as basis for their operation. Meron silang tinatawag na democratic centralism. Then there are the basic conditions that has to be done by the party. Makita mo rito na it is the absolute control of the Communist Party once you are a party member. Further, there is the category of leadership within the party, as you know from the screen. Furthermore, the Central Committee or the KTKS serves as the core of the leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines, as shown also on the screen. And they have Executive Committee and the General Secretariat. They have also the International Department Operations. They have also party groups inside the mass organization. They have party groups also inside the government. And here is the Communist Party relation to the New People's Army, where the party exercised absolute control of all NP operations. In fact, the most concentration of the party members is inside the New People's Army. The CPP relation. Now I'll discuss now the Central Committee operations or the Communist Party operations inside the, in the Central Committee structure. Makikita natin sa screen that the leadership of the Central Committee is exercised by the Executive Committee and the Secretariat. Further, they are implementing it to the National Military Commission. This is the, for the Communist Party. Furthermore, the key the case issues as the General Secretariat issues me one circulars to organs, units, and committees. Likewise, the CPP organization established its National Function and Commission level, National Staff Organ, and Territorial Commission. This is still the party that I'm talking about. They have, they have also the commissions and the regional party operations as shown on the screen. The line works of the National Military Commission, the National Peace and Commission, the National Organization Department, the Propaganda and Cultural Commission, the National United Front Commission, National Finance, National Education, the National Political Mass Mobilization, and the International Department is their line of works. Let's talk of the New People's Army in the Central Committee. Yes, they are in the National Military Commission. They are also the one who implements the Agrarian Revolution Program as presented by the National Peasant Commission. Further, they have the National Operations Command that undertakes the revolutionary taxation in the national level through the National Tax Implementing Unit. Now let's talk of the NDF in the Central Committee. The only operation is the Central Committee is through the National United Front Commission, the National Organization Department, and the National Political Commission, and the International Department. So dito pa lang makita natin sa Central Committee, magkasama silang tatlo. The NDF is the formal structure of the NUFC, where majority of the underground mass organization are being operated. Let's talk now of the regional structure. Only think about there is a national design to seize political power to general offensive and general uprising. The underground mass organization leaders the framework for the general offensive to arm struggle. The above ground organization lays down the heightening of politicization for political for political struggle in the conduct of general uprising. Okay, in the regional operations, we can see here that it is the regional committee region that undertake the central control 
All of these are party members and all of these are political officers. So they observe the People's Protective War as their framework for this operation. Now, ironically, the Regional Committee undertakes its Regional Education Department in the conduct of PADIPA schools programs and all above ground organization, legal and open organizations undertake these PADIPA courses. So this is the composition. And by the way, it's worth mentioning here that the white area operation is crafted in the different regional party committee. It is not in the front committee. Ang gusto ko pong sabihin ay makikita natin ngayon ano ang mukha ng party sa regional structure. Idadaanan ko lang po ito siya. Now, what is the face of the NP operation in the regional structure? Nandiyan yung tinatawag na Regional Military Committee or Regional Operations Command. Makikita din natin ang kanilang mga sub-guerrilla units or sub-regional committee and the front guerrilla units na isang masakit na katotohanan ang salugar na tribo, tinatawag pa nila itong kulang bagani command. Furthermore, nandiyan yung Regional Trade Union Bureau sa NDF operations. Ito na. The NDF operations in the regional structure is about Regional White Area Committee. Mahalata natin na targang ang NDF na siyang kumikilo sa mga UGMOS ay lumalangoy din sa mga legal organization. In fact, I can say now, even in Congress, nandun si, si, si Congresswoman Kulyamat and others, ang sinabi ko sa kanila, these legal organizations are created by the party, run by the party, operated by the party, but not all members are communist. Kaya kawawa po doon yung mga kasapi na talagang makatotohanan ang kanilang pag-aayos sa ating bayan. So meron tayong Regional United Front Commission. May mga white area committees tayo. At tungkol sa support system sa red area ang laki ng tulong ng in-deep operations. Including the buildings of organs of political power. Ano itong organs of political power? These are the sangay sa partido lokal. These are the militia ng bayan. These are the Barrio Revolutionary Committee and these are the, the underground mass organization. Ngayon, punta tayo sa front, front pinakamaba pa, yung front. Ang front actually does not make the design. The front committee implements the regional design. So makita natin na may labing tatlong elements po ang front committee operation. Ganyan po, karami ang kanilang gawain sa front committee operation. Ang NPO operation naman ay nag-undertake ng political military works or pull mill dahil mayroong tinatawag na front operational command. At dito, nandito rin ang INDEP. Ano yung limang adikay na ang INDEP, lalo na sa white area? Mass base building, education propaganda, alliances, mass struggle, and produce cadre. Kasi nga, legal ang, ang, ang napapakita. Yan ang irony na hinaharap ngayon ng National Task Force ILCAC. So, conclusion, as a matter of principle and practice, the party is the comprehensive leader and center of the Philippine Revolution in both national democratic and socialist stages. It leads the armed struggle, the united front, mass movement, the local organs of political power, and eventually the People's Democratic Republic of the Philippines. The CPP does not intend to achieve a strong Philippine nation capable of addressing its own social problems and preserving its rich cultural heritage, but it is a movement of advancing the universal theories of Marxism, Leninism, Mamoism, using its application to the Philippine society. The term nationalist, therefore, is a mere deception to unify the Filipino people under the National Democratic Revolution. The NDR intend to exploit the different sectors of the society, not to attain resolution or sectoral issues or class conflict, but to emphasize and heighten such conflict to the result in the advancement of the National Democratic Revolution. And it will not stop there, but to complete its three stages in order to seize political power and start the socialist construction. Number four, the CPP clearly implements the democratic centralism and committee system 
as the operational guide to address the operational dynamics. The national organs are set up to clearly position the party in the leadership position and to address being tailored to the initiatives of the different sector. The socialist perspective is constantly reminded to set up the direction that the revolution is not completed unless it will also advance the socialist construction. Ang, ang mukha, sir, ng socialist construction ay mamakikita natin sa mga agreements na nakasulat sa mga nakaraang mga pistos. It is in this context that we are calling the attention that human rights in general and the civil and economic rights of the sector as well as the national nationalist fervor inherent to its Filipino as a result of our historical and collective experience as a nation is being exploited. It is not the aim of the CPP in the NDF. Therefore, the pretense of being human rights defender and being nationalist is the unifying direction of the mass organization and the people, but it's separate from the objective of the party, which is towards internationalism and socialism. Imagine being a member of an open, democratic, and pro-people organization, but in practice, an organization exclusively controlled by the OGMOS, and which in turn exclusively controlled by the party group or party brands, that by that practice or the principle of democratic centralism is exclusively controlled by the Communist Party. Religious leaders, professionals, and middle class will be fooled to believe that their interests can, will be protected by aligning themselves with their strategic in nature or tactically with the CPP. Because at a certain level of advancement of the revolution, they will be the target of weeding out in the framework of class contradiction and conflict. Eight, the ultimate end is to destroy the current government and replace it to impose the Filipino people as a socialist government where the dictatorship of the proletariat, which is actually the Communist Party, will reign in power. That this is not really a revolution to liberate the Filipino people from social ills and it's achieving social change that will address their demands and interests, but a plan to seize political power by the Communist Party and the construction of the socialist Philippine society, meaning on the eve of seizure of political power and the conduct of general offensive through an armed struggle and through the general uprising will commence the socialist construction. The whole CPP organization subscribes to the principle of an even development and utilizes this in implementing priorities. I will quick plus, we have the echelon of alliances that the city just wants to establish. Of course, this is another briefing. 11, without the NPA, the people have nothing and the National Democratic Revolution <coughs> as the only solution for the problem of people are being popularized, but it's not mean that they are true. In fact, you can glimpse on facts and put the documentations that they are false. Now, let me show you now the details of, of what I'm trying to say. The CPP lead underground mass organization and open sectoral organization. Shown on the screen on the left are underground organization. Shown on the right are the open legal mass organization. Ulitin ko po. Itong nasa kanan, these are organized by the party, run by the party, operated by the party, but not all members there are communists. I just quickly present this one by one. So, ito po ang mga pagtatapat ng UGMO at saka legal organization. In conclusion number 13, the CPP lead part partilist organizations with India UGMO courses inside. This is the end of my presentation, sir, but please allow me just for a minute, last one minute, sir, to show to you something. Uh, because uh, dito kami na nahihirapan sir dahil uh, medyo mabigat yung uh, ipapakita ko po rito ang uh, CTG propaganda machinery. Hindi ko po sinasabi rito na lahat na organisasyon na to ay communist. Pero ang sinasabi ko to, this is a part of the network of the CTG's propaganda machinery. To play. So shown on the screen. Simulan. Dito makikita natin sir ang estatura ng Central Committee. Makikita natin ang National Propaganda and Cultural Commission. 
Diyan makikita natin paano ito pinaghati-hati sa iba-ibang mga grupo na part ng network nila. Ulitin ko to, I'm not declaring that all these are communist organization. Just to put in perspective. However, kahit pagtagaan natin ngayon na sisilipin, makikita mo pag may labas ang liberation or ang bayan at ang uh, uh, meron silang uh, tatlong group. Ang bayan is the official weekly publication of the party. Ang revolution ay for deeper ideological discussion. Ang liberation ay hindi publication. Makikita nyo po, paglabas nito sa tatlo, tuloy-tuloy na yan sa baba para silang isang wave of connection na naglalabas ng mga propaganda laban sa gobyerno. Ang tanong ko ngayon, sirs, your honors, mananahimik ba tayo if the last so many years they are using this to corrupt the minds, to radicalize the mind, to politicize the mind of the Filipino people? If indeed truth-telling truth -telling is a crime, then ako mismo, sir, I'm willing to go to jail for that just to liberate and speak for the truth. I also want to put on record here kasi nagsalita kanina ang Commission of Human Rights na Executive Director. Hindi niya sinasabi na ang NCIP, ang NTFLCAP went to the office of the CSR. I volunteered to them all PowerPoint presentation, all documents of the NTFLCAP and I told them, Sir, ma'am, kung may nakita kayong mali dyan, salamat, magpapasalamat ako. Kasi imposible naman na perfect yung aming ginawa. Sabihan nyo, mo, nyo po kami at sama-sama natin pagtutulungan ayusin ito. Uh, the, sir, uh, the head told me na sige magtandim tayo sa tinatawag natin na Human Rights Watch, etc. Nag-aantay po kami. Nagsimula na sila, sila hindi kami inibita. Nung umikot ako sa Mindanao from August 3 to October 6, 68 days to be exact, inikot ko 124 Pastors of Ancestral Domain, anong ginagawa ko araw-araw? Hinahanap ko po ang Commission of Human Rights. Pag hindi nag-atin, pinatatawagan ko ang kanilang opisina. Bakit? Gusto kong ipakita sa kanila na wala kami tinatago. In every gathering, we requested the seats are to speak and even put their numbers so that all that are listening can make a report tungkol po dyan. So, marami pa sana akong sasabihin pero sa totoo lang, uh, ay okay na to na napresenta ko ang framework. But there's the last one. Quickly lang po. Last one. Zero another one minute lang po. Mapakita ko lang po to uh, your honor. Kasi ito yung mas detali. Makikita na naman natin dito ang mukha. Paano naglalaro ang party? Paano naglalaro ang INDEP? At saka INTE? So dito, for the CTG's regional operations, makikita natin na mayroong tungkol sa party building about the party. There is an RB building tungkol sa NPA. There is United Front building tungkol sa NDEP. Ang una ay about ideological. Makikita mo yun ang kanilang gawain. Ang susunod niyan ay political. Makikita natin ang kanilang mga gawain. Ang susunod niyan ay organizational. Makita nila ang kanilang mga gawain. Yan po sa regional committee party level. Pag pumunta po tayo sa front guerrilla operation, sa front committee level, Ito naman po ang ating makikita. Meron silang party building, army building, unit of run. So kung titingnan natin ito, they are an organization, they are a mafia na they are working on a certain framework. So hindi natin sila pwede labanan na hindi natin ilalatag ang kanilang framework. Kasi ito ang magbibigay ng signature ng kanilang gawain. Bakit mula sa taas hanggang sa baba, May mga open legal organization that everybody is shouting na nire-red tag sila. No, this presentation will tell that this is not red tagging. This is truth telling of their signature for the last 50 years. Ito po ang kanilang gawain araw-araw, 24-7 sa kanilang buhay habang sila ay nasa partido. Ngayon, ang tanong ngayon, nagsisigaw yung ibang legal organization. For the sake of it, Pete. Kasi sabi ng Cesar ka kanina, hindi nila alam. Ngayon, ang tanong, kailan natin ilalabas ang katotohanan? When, we, when, when are we going to speak the truth? Kaya nga, meron tayong NTFLCAC. Meron tayong NTFLCAC na lahat ito ay tinitingnan. Last year, another one minute, last na talaga to, sir. Mr. Sir, may... <laughs> 
are we going to be given the same amount of time, Mr. Chair, to us? Kailan tayo matatapos, Mr. Chair? Because we will rebut. They will rebut. They will rebut. Mauusin ako. One minute, sir. Mabilis ko, sir. Patapusin mo na ako. Kahit itong copy na ito, sir, ibibigay ko ito sa mga kabayang black. Alam niyo po ba? Noong nag-print out kami ng national accomplishment report of the National Task Force ILCA, doon sa Congress memo, Congress memo, Galing sa printing press, I give a copy of the Intip Elkak annual report to Congresswoman Kuyama, including the annual report of the NCIP. Kung iisipin ninyo, hindi ko pa nga naibigay ang kopya kay DG Nika at kasi Tari Spiron, binigyan ko na si, si, si Congresswoman Kuyama, binigyan ko na siya ng copy ng Intip Elkak at Sanji. Ano yung sabi doon? We are transparent, wala kaming tinatago, kahit anytime, pigyain nyo ko, kahit ito ngayon, itong main thesis na to. Complete to serve the details. Just to give you an example, let's talk of one activity, basic services. Ito ang mukha ng ating, kanyan, any point dyan pwede natin pag-usapan. Punta tayo sa local government empowerment. You can click there anything. Matag-usapan natin. Andyan ang objectives ng Intipil Cup. Wala kami tinatago dyan. Puntahan natin ang programa ng CPP. Andyan, pinapakita din namin. If... Congressman Ting and others want a copy, we will give you a copy. But let's discuss this truthfully. So, diyan na lang po ang aking presentation, sir. Maraming salamat. By the way, last na lang, sir. Si Congressman Kuryama po ay aking distant relative. Dahil siya ay manubo, ako ay manubo rin. Nidugo lang ako na kang kanay. Ang problema, doon sa marihatag sa lugar niya, I was there two months ago. For the first time in years, nagtayo tayo ng eskwilahan doon. Itinaas ang plug ng Pilipinas for the first time. Andun yung mga bata, elementary students, they don't know how to sing the national anthem. Anong kinakanta nila? Ito ang kinakanta nila. Bangon sa pagkakabusabos. That is an international song. Yun ang schools doon na last two months ago, we were there to put up that elementary school of Jiped. So, ang katotohanan, sir, nasa ground. I retired eight years ahead of my military retirement because I joined the struggle of the indigenous peoples. Mali yung sinasabi ni Congresswoman Kuryama na tawagin ang tribo na lumad. Then ang salitang lumad ay salita ng partido. Diyan na lang po at magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Thank you po yan. Would you like to suggest? Okay. Just ready, sir. I will not counter the very long thesis of uh, the gentleman. But basically, Mr. Chair, if it is true that he is describing how the CPP operates, ano ang kinalaman ko dyan? Ano ang kinalaman ng organization namin dyan? I mean, has he ever showed an instance where we in Bayan called for an armed revolution to bring down the government? Is socialism among our platforms? Are we calling for the establishment of a communist state? In fact, are we doing anything illegal or prohibited? E para mo sa aming ordinaryong tao, yun lang naman ang sukatan natin eh. I might think differently from you. We may have different beliefs and different ideologies, but the bottom line, Mr. Chair, may ginagawa ba kaming illegal? May ginagawa ba kaming bawal? Even at meeting, sige, sabihin nyo na, mga CPP yan, although kayo naman na nagsasabi, hindi nyo rin alam na hindi naman pala lahat yan CCP. But even rating, what is the bottom line, Mr. Chair? May ginawa ba kaming lumag sa batas? And as long as we do not do anything illegal, Why will you not tag us and claim that we are part of the armed movement and we are doing anything illegal? I think that is the crux of the matter with red tagging, Mr. Chair. This is not a simple issue na tinatawas kami ng pula. Yung red tagging po, may kasabay yun eh. May kasabay na surveillance. May kasabay na pananakot. Itetext ka, tatakutin ka, pupuntahan yung magulang mo. Sasabihin mo, pasukuin mo na yung anak mo. Susuko saan? Eh, wala namang ginagawang mali. And then, at the worst, eh, ilalagay yung mga mukha mo sa poster, ililin niya yung pangalan mo, pati yung pamilya mo. And then, later on, patay na yung mga nandun sa poster. That is the problem here. And I think, whatever is the theory of the state security forces, 
The bottom line is you have to come up with evidence on your accusations and file it in the proper venue. Ay nangyayari po kung saan-saan nyo dinadala yung allegasyon ninyo sa social media, sa mga posters, mga police. Uh, I don't know if you recall the presentation by uh, Representative Ilago. Talagang pambabastos na sa pagkatao niya yung ginagawa. At ito ko nilalagay ito sa mga official Facebook pages ng Philippine National Police all over the country. You know, uh, eh, eh, sabi ni President uh, Soto, why don't we file libel? We can do that, Mr. Chair. But, you know, this is the state that we are going against. Uh, this is official policy and at the highest ranks, the President himself is even retagging us. San tayo? San kami pupulutin yan, Mr. Chair? And so I think the Senate should really sana po, pag-aralan talaga ng Senado itong phenomenon ng red tagging. I think it is very dis very revealing ang sinabi ng uh, ating Commission on Human Rights that this escalated starting 2016-2017. Uh, uh, so we hope that the Senate can really come up with a report and measures that will prevent this travesty of justice at the uh, uh, dahil mo sa tamang lugar at sa tamang uh, venue. Kung ano man ang uh, akusasyon ninyo sa amin, hindi itong guilt by association and trial by publicity, which is basically what red tagging is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, at the end of the day, no, of repeated challenge it was <laughs> by the Makabayan Black. At the end of the day, the only venue that can interpret kung sino yung may violation, the court. So, kanina ko pag gusto itanong sa inyo, if you believe that you have the evidence necessary to file the necessary charges, of course, this is a, uh, an inquiry in aid of legislation. This is different. Pero kung meron kayo, kasi sa dami na na-presenta ninyo, if you believe that you have enough evidence to secure a conviction or at least get past the probable cause uh, level, then go ahead. Nobody is preventing you. In fact, they're challenging you, challenging you to do that, you know, precisely. So, sige, Sikler Esperon. Then after that, we will ask... We will ask... Hindi, marami pa. Hindi, we will go to court. As we have done in the Ilmapakan case, when we filed in 2006 a case of multiple murder for their uh, internal purging, we went for it. And the case, I just uh, appeared as the... 29th uh, witness, the last witness in that case. We also filed a case against uh, uh, the couple uh, and the Chamsons. We went to that, and we will continue filing cases. But this is also an opportunity for us to inform the public of the true face of the CPP in PA. They have been saying that joining the NPA is a personal decision. But that is just a cop-out or a denial of their responsibility after their organizations have radicalized the youth and now they're claiming no responsibility for it when they join the NPA. When they become NPAs, they will not even consider them as enemies, even if they're killing people, destroying public or private property, or exacting illegal taxations. What kind of government officials, which they were, would not consider them as enemy people who are bearing arms against government. Mr. Chair, I'm reminded of the tricks that they do, and this was discussed by columnist Mr. Bobby Tiglau. One of the tricks that they do is to make their organization a secret by way of taking advantage of underground mass organizations that are actually in control of legal fronts or organizations. And when they are found out to be so, they simply say that their organizations are doing or pursuing good causes, as if they are the only organization that could do that. The truth is, they are not at all un- in complete organization, we know 
that as a result of this armed struggle that they are pursuing, they have left a broad trail of blood shed across the land. And the death of two ladies that for, for whom we ask for one minute prayer earlier at the start, is part of this bloodshed. Unfortunately, and we condole with the Koldemak family, it's their daughter that died last November 28. Mr. Chairman, we have not been red tagging them. They are the ones that have red tagged themselves. Mr. Season had a video clip. Their actions tell us that they are part of the CPP NPA complex. And therefore, we can only say that we really have, as a matter of responsibility, we really have to inform the public. And we thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Senate President, and all members of the Senate for giving us this opportunity to give our testimonies led by our former rebels, who could be the best witnesses of what had been happening underground and above ground. Just one more point, Mr. Chair. They've been saying that they could not condemn the NPA or their comrades and this in the same manner that they could not condemn the MNLF and the MILF. Let me just point out that the MNLF and the MILF, when we signed peace agreements with them, there was a portion for the commissioning of firearms. In the proposed CASER, the CPP NPA would be the one that will be redistributing lands and there will be a reduction of forces of the armed forces. Parang baliktad. Hindi lang coalition government. Parang sila pa ang nanalo. That's why the peace talks at this point, the peace talks is not our priority. We want to settle this communist armed conflict by way of addressing the political, social, economic problems and also defeat their armed group, the New People's Army. Again, Mr. Chair, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much that you have given us. Let it be said that this Senate hearing is a platform for only one particular party or group. This is your platform as much as this is their platform to present uh, both sides, Niva. And I think the Senate President and I uh, have conducted this hearing in the most uh, fair uh, manner. Before I forget, si Senator Amy Marcos, kanina pa pala ito naka-online. Senator Marcos, would you like to say something before we adjourn? Senator Amy? Anyway. Okay, so let's wind up and if there are any more submissions to make, submit na lang kayo ng position paper. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Same goes through sa security sector. So yeah, with that, yeah, the, on behalf of the Senate President, I'd like to thank all the resource persons that, that attended these uh, three hearings. And I just hope we'll be given that uh, wisdom to and, and guidance you know, to come up with a uh, an, a very objective committee report uh, in this regard. So, ingat kayo, ingat kayo, ingat kayo sa isa't isa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs>